we had a call that there was an IED threat in the area. We had to go check it out and see if there was one. You know, we went out there as normal. It was supposed to be a pretty quick mission. You know, just a couple hours in the village right next to our, our strong point and back. We were setting the gun in place. Fessy went first, swept the bank. He went uh, up and down, cleared it. He got about 20 feet away from me. You know, I said, okay. I took my bag off and set it down. And when I set it down, Honestly, the first thing that kicked into my mind was, this is not real. This is fake. I remember actually while we were working on him, one of the things he said was, I just want to be able to hold my little girl again. Do you love your daddy? So I'm getting out of here in 10 months. I kept saying, why? You know, what's your big rush? I said, hey doc, look behind you. I had pictures up of me and my wife and my daughter. I have a family. Like, I, I live in a hospital bed. Get me out of here. Yeah, him with Chloe, you know, she doesn't care that her dad doesn't have arms and legs. It's her dad. So, it's all she knows. It's all she knows of him. So, to her, nothing was lost the way I see it. Seeing him stand up for the first time, I could feel so much joy from him. That was like a turning point for us. I don't understand how he does it. I think he's meant to lead and help people. You know, he faces obstacles and he doesn't let anything stop him. I believe God's got a plan for all of us. And after seeing Travis in action, the word bravery has more meaning to me now than it ever has. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, a little bit about me, real quick housekeeping. One, when I stood up, air rushed out of my socket. It sounded like I passed wind. I didn't. No, really, like it, it ha I lost a little bit of weight and like it happened, so my apologies. That's embarrassing. A couple things about me. One, I'm awesome. Yeah, and two, I'm humble. In that order. If you've been to the other things I spoke at, you probably heard that joke, I'm sorry. But if you guys missed it, then you're going to want to hear it because it's so good. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, having me come here. I know you guys probably didn't really have a say, but either way, thanks for coming and listening you know, to me and putting up with this. Um, ladies, I am married. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm married. I'm sorry. So just want to break hearts and mend friendships. A little bit about me. I'm from a small town in Michigan. Uh, 2,500 people, two stoplights. One's a green arrow, so I count it, but I don't know if it really counts. Uh, I joined the military at 19. I went ahead and went to Afghanistan at 19 on a 15-month deployment. I was able to have one and a half million dollars worth of equipment I was in charge of and two to three other lives that depended on me, and if I told them to shoot, then I was the one responsible for what they shot at. I finished that deployment, um, met a pretty lady, and we ended up getting married shortly after. We then you know, got an apartment. I went overseas again for a year. I had some of the best and worst times of my life. I showered four times in one year. I keep that regiment to this day. It's <laughs> no, it's good for the skin, seriously. Like, see it? Uh, a lot of firefights, a lot of, a lot of things going on in that deployment, which is all in the book that, that, I, uh, that I was able to write, uh, Tough As I Come. I came home, my wife had bought, in a or had bought a house while I was overseas. In my name, power of attorney is amazing. <laughs> she had to take me home and show me it. It was really sweet. And uh, after that, we um, found out we were going to have a baby four months after I got home. Not really we. I guess she was going to have the baby. I was going to be blamed for everything she was going through. Great teamwork in that. <laughs> my daughter was born September 2011. And in 2012, February, I had to leave for another deployment. I had options to get out of it. I could have went to Fort Hood and did a different um, assignment, but I canceled that. I didn't want to do that. I had guys that came in the military out of high school that looked up to me. I had seven other lives I was in charge of, and I was the third highest ranking person it was on the enlisted side in my, uh, in my troop. So I had a lot of responsibility. My wife understood that, and she said that, you know, I should go on this appointment. And uh, look at me now, right? It's a joke. We can laugh. Uh, I like to disarm the situation. 
You get, you get it? You get it. Um, that's a good one. Jeez, I just can't, I keep rolling them out. <laughs> Two months into my deployment, my daughter's six months old. My wife and I are uh, doing well. I happened to set my bag down on an improvised explosive device. As a ground underneath me erupted, my right arm and right leg were disintegrated. They never found them. My left leg was broken through, uh, snapped through the bone, dangling next to my thigh with a couple pieces of skin and tendon holding it on. My left hand was still there. My pinky and ring finger were gone, and my left wrist was blown out really bad. So when I rolled over uh, my back to see what happened, I hit my radio, and I said, hey, six, I called my LT, this is four. Uh, I just hit a bomb. I need your medic to help my medic. My medic ran up to me, and I told him, get away from me. Save my guys. Leave me alone. Like, I'm not going to make it, and it's fine. I wasn't going to show fear. I wasn't going to you know, cry out in pain. I was just going to let it happen. Whatever was going to go on was going to happen with me being, I guess, as, as uh, tough as they come. Oh, is that? <laughs> is that the title of the book? It is. My medic said, let me do my job. I know, it's okay to laugh. Like, I like to just joke around. Like, I'm serious when I need to be. Um, but, the, the you know, I... I Told the medic to get away from me. He said, let me do my job. With tourniquets, him and my platoon sergeant fixed me in 20 seconds, stopped the bleeding. I loaded a helicopter. From the helicopter, I uh, flew to the you know, hospital in Kandahar. I went to the operating table, and I kept telling them, quit touching me. I'm fine. Leave me alone. I kept trying to sit up. And they were like, I don't know how you're still awake, Sergeant Mills. You need to go to sleep. <laughs> they knocked me out. Last thing I said, my little girl, am I ever going to hold her again? And that was it for me. When they started to operate, they pulled my pants off. Just so happens my left leg came with it. <laughs> Done. Triple amputee. Um, on April 12th, I cut my left hand off the rest of the way in Bagram, Afghanistan. On April 14th, they woke me up in Launchstuhl, Germany for the first time for my medical sedation. And my brother-in-law was there to tell me what the outcome was. I said, my, uh, my soldiers harm my soldiers. And he told me what had happened. Then I said, am I paralyzed? And he said, no. And I said, Josh, seriously, I can take it. I can't put my fingers and toes. Am I paralyzed? And he said, no. And it just so happens, April 14th is a huge day in my mom and dad's life. It's when their favorite son was born. Yeah, no, I have an older sister and younger brother. They don't really count. Uh, so on my 25th birthday, I found out I was, in fact, a quadruple amputee. Uh, angry, embarrassed, didn't know where I was supposed to go with this. I didn't want to call my wife. I didn't want to talk to my mom and dad. I didn't want to talk to anybody. But I had to. They kind of made me, so I did. But uh, I flew back to the States on April 17th. I saw my wife for the very first time. It wasn't that Kodak moment you might expect, that Hallmark you know, movie, Lifetime Channel stuff. It was actually signed the paper. I had sutures ripped open on um, my bottom of my right leg, and they had to take another two inches off my leg. But now my wife was in charge of my medical care. And she kept telling the doctor, pull the plug, it's okay. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, Kelsey. She's like, don't, don't get in our conversation, grown, you know. There's adults talking, Travis. And I'm like, Kelsey, but she's like, shh, doc, just pull the plug. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is ridiculous. It's a joke. It's a joke. Um, I told her to sign the paper. So they had to take me back to immediate surgery and cut two inches off. The next day, I told her, take everything we have. I said, you can have the house, the money, the cars. You don't have to bear this burden. You don't have to put up with this. Like, I will pay for everything. You can have anything and everything I have, but you don't have to put up with me. And she was offended because uh, she knew a little secret I didn't realize yet. I was in the VIP section of parking. And she wanted that, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That little blue tag, she's like, oh my gosh, like, you're trying to cut me out? Like, that's ridiculous. Because, I mean, I'm front row wherever I go, you know? Maybe that's not, but yeah. So she, uh, she went ahead and let me know, like, that's not how this is going to work. I'm going to be here for you, and we're going to get through this together. So, uh, all right, cool. I had to get my motivation, and I found it. I had a little girl that was six months old. I thought she was going to think I'm a monster. You know, like, her dad's got a pick line coming out of his neck, tubes out of every uh, limb that's left with a wound vac machine, little sticky things all over my chest. And as I'm thinking she's gonna think I'm a monster, I'm not realizing that with my sweater that I wear under my shirt and my short arms and legs, I'm the world's best teddy bear. Um, and she's squeezing my nose and I'm trying to fend her off and I'm coming up short. <laughs> you know, with, <laughs> quit it. Um, I had a long road to recovery. I had met uh, some people at the hospital when I was questioning if I, why did I live, am I a bad person, does God hate me, what did I do wrong in life, I mean, I paid my taxes and things like that, and then um, I had a guy walk in, he lives in St. Louis, actually, he's a quadruple amputee, I'm not the first, I'm not the last, I'm just the best looking, uh, yeah, no, it's true, whatever, 
I'm very humble after I'm awesome. So, but uh, and he said, you're going to be fine. I drive, I, I, I walk, I feed myself, whatever. So I had to get better. So I started setting goals. Within five weeks, I had my hand for the very first time. I was using it. Ow. Oh, no, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. No, straight up. That, that doesn't hurt. So it was cool. Within five weeks, I was feeding myself, doing things. Within seven weeks and four days, I was walking again. And uh, it, was a, you know, it was a fast recovery but slow process for me. I found out that actually failure was going to be part of my success. Uh, my first day walking, they said, you'll walk one lap. I walked three. The last uh, straightaway, and this is where it actually comes from, the title. Actually, the last straightaway, I told my therapist, I said, I'm going to pick my crushes up and walk without them. And Carrie said, no, don't do that. You're not strong enough. And I said, yes, I am. So I picked them up, and I started walking. I set up 82nd Airborne Division. You know, I'm as, I'm as tough as they come. <laughs> title again. <laughs> but that's legit. Like, I have that on file. Um, that's in the documentary. But then it turns out she was right. I wasn't ready because I fell right over. <laughs> and she's like, serves you right. Um, <laughs> But my second day of walking, my dad didn't make the first day. My dad actually had diverticulitis um, when he got to the hospital because he got so dehydrated. <laughs> he had to go to the surgery and almost died. <laughs> Trying to steal my thunder, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I was upset with him. He would walk down with his pick line, you know, pick line and his little bags of saline or whatever and come in my room like, hey, man, get out. Like, this isn't about you. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so he was coming down the second time. And I said, I'm going to walk five laps today, Dad. I walked half a, half a lap, which isn't that big. The MATC, the Military Advanced Training Center, is probably as big as this room. So just one straightaway. Um, I walked, and I fell right over. And I couldn't get up. My muscles flexed up real bad. And I started to really cry. Like, I don't do that no more. I gave that up. But I started to cry at the time. And I apologized. And he's like, no, it's OK. And my therapist said, look, you know, the second day is always the hardest because your muscles are so t uh, sore. So I had to find out that failure was going to be a part of my success. I turned my therapy into a 40-hour-a-week um, job, really. I took it on because I had to be my daughter's father. I know that sounds kind of weird to say, but she looked up to me for things. And I strap her in a wheelchair, and I go around room to room, and I visit people, and I became known as the mayor of 62, where we all lived at, and I would take care of problems. When the Boston bombing went off, I was able to travel to Boston to the Spalding Rehab Center and meet with 16 other patients, um, whether they're amputated or just burned real bad or shrapnel. And I was able to do physical therapy and occupational therapy with them for three days. It wasn't very publicized. It wasn't nothing that we were doing for the cameras. We did it because we wanted to help. From that experience and my experience at Walter Reed and everything I've been through, my wife and my daughter being my biggest support, um, I was able to go on the road and travel and speak, which I do a lot of. I'm not very good at it, but it's OK. No, I'm awesome at it. Come on, are you guys kidding me? <laughs> but I was able to do that. And from that, I was reached out. people reached out about doing a book. And we went with a literary agent. I went to. Random House and had a meeting and they signed the deal. I work with Wade, if anyone wants to uh, know who I speak through. Wade, raise your hand real quick, this champion. Um, he's got me on the road. I'm actually, that's right, he deserves it. Uh, fortunately, I get to come to these events tonight. Um, I'm leaving for St. Louis. I speak in a conference in the morning and then I'm off to Vegas that night and I speak in Vegas. And I see my family, I don't know what my daughter looks like anymore. It's, I'm not complaining, but seriously, Wade, seriously, no. I think my book is, uh, is definitely something that models uh, resiliency, which is uh, what you guys are looking for in this conference. When I go and speak to high school students, to college students, to C-level executives, Fortune 500 companies, uh, Microsoft, and I've kind of been everywhere, I just tell them, know what perspective is. I tell them how I set my goals, what motivated me, my short-term and long-term goals, how I met them. I talk about healthcare technology, how this all works. I would love to have someone come up here so I can have them yell at my hand. I got to tell him it's voice activated. It's not. But I've gotten Peyton Manning and a bunch of other people. He kept yelling Omaha. I was like, Peyton, you're not getting it. But <laughs> whatever. But he's like, Omaha. I'm like, Peyton, no. It's open and close. Omaha. I'm like, oh, stop it, Peyton. But uh, I talk about perspective. And I'm so thankful to still be alive. Uh, I have friends that didn't make it home, that will never see their kids, never be with their wives, never have the opportunity to see their family on holidays. And um, the doctors put 14 hours of surgery into me, nine doctors, seven nurses, two nurses for seven hours pumped air into my lungs. And I feel it would be a selfish slap in the face to ever give up on myself with all the things and opportunities I have still ahead of me. So I drive my daughter to school at 8 AM. I go to the CrossFit gym, check it out. What? <laughs> and again, I'm married. I'm sorry. I don't know. But um, with that, my timer's staying three seconds. So I appreciate your time. I hope you guys meet me out there. We get on Instagram, take some pictures, um, and, we'll, and we'll see how this goes. So thank you for your time. Have a great day. Appreciate it.